People always ask me, what tools do I use? Well, this episode of the AMPM podcast is brought to you by Helium 10, the same tools I use to generate six figures per month selling on Amazon FBA. Keyword research, product tracking, listing optimization, search term tracking, account monitoring, and new tools and services every single month. All the best tools in one place. Visit Helium10.com today and have a massive advantage over your competition. Morning. The following podcast has been classified as insanely lucrative. Listener discretion is advised. And it's no wonder when I look at how bad some of these images are that people are failing, that their product just isn't taking off. They're wondering, why am I not getting any sales? Your attention, please. please. Listening to the AMPM podcast may cause recurring revenue streams and unfair, unfair advantages over your competitors. Other side effects may include better wallets, fired bosses, and longer vacations. Listen at your own risk. Here's your host, seven-figure entrepreneur and online marketing madman, Manny Coates. Manny Coates. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the AMPM podcast. My name is Manny Coates, and I will be your host. And this is the show where we discuss how to generate recurring revenue streams 24 hours per day during the AM and the PM, hence the name of the show, AMPM podcast. As a matter of fact, I was in Napa doing some wine tasting tours, and while I was sipping wine, I was making money. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. So today, I'm going to be talking about images, and I've covered this a lot before, but I keep seeing the same kinds of messages posted in our Facebook group. And by the way, if you are not a member of our Facebook group, please go join there. We've got uh, well over 4,000 active members. Uh, The Facebook group is called the Amazon FBA High Rollers. And uh, you can do a search for that on Facebook or you can go directly to our website at ampmpodcast.com and click on the Facebook graphic and it'll take you right there. Uh, And then uh, it is a closed group, but Guillermo will get you approved or one of our admins will get you approved um, pretty quickly. Anyways, the images, we got to get back to this. I, I'm actually almost appalled at some of the stuff that I'm seeing, um, as well as just looking at products when I'm doing research, you know, for, for something new and seeing what people are doing with their images. And it's no wonder when I look at how bad some of these images are that people are failing, that their product just isn't taking off. They're wondering, why am I not getting any sales? Why are people actually clicking on my ad? but there's no conversion. Why is my A cost, my ACOS, right? The cost of advertising. Why is it so high? Well, you know what? Images, once they get to your page, your product page, the image or your images, you should have them all filled in. Those are the most important things on your page, okay? Forget about titles, bullet points, and descriptions. You only need that in order to actually get your listing to show on a search result, okay? You want, that's for discovery, right? When someone types in a specific keyword, you need to get your product to actually display on the search results. That's where that stuff comes in, okay, keywords. But after that, the majority of people, they don't care what your title, what your bullet points are, and your description. Chances are, you know, eight out of 10 people probably aren't even gonna read those. They might read your title and that's about it. They're gonna look at the images. They're gonna look at your thumbnails, and they've got to be good. First of all, your first image, which generates the thumbnail that people see on the search results, has to be amazing, right? Because that's being compared to all the other images that are being shown on that first page uh, results. Now, you might be saying, well, what about pricing? Well, yeah, pricing is important, right? I mean, if all things are equal on the search results page, right? Someone does a search for whatever it is, let's say a bunny scratcher, and your bunny scratcher image shows up, right? And another bunny scratcher image shows up and they're almost the same, right? They look uh, of equal quality. Then it's going to come down to pricing. Someone's going to look at the price points and then they're going to click into most likely the one that has the lowest price. Uh, Same thing with reviews, right? If everything looks equal and one of them has 30 reviews, another has 300 reviews, chances are the one with 300 reviews will probably get that click. So I'm not discounting pricing. I'm not discounting reviews, the number of, uh, of reviews your product actually has, those things are important. And you have to get those things uh, built up as well. But in terms of images, guys, it's, it's absolutely imperative that you get really good images. I've seen stuff, and we're going to talk about some of the things that I've seen, where these sellers will take their image and then they Photoshop 
the product into uh, a stock image, right? They get something on, let's say, shutterstock.com. Okay, that's a that's a site that has uh, millions, I, I believe, probably millions of of stock photography. Okay, and you can get an image, right? So if, for example, you're selling candles or candle holders, okay, they'll get an image of a nice living room with a table, and then they'll Photoshop the candle onto the table, and that will become one of their images. Now. I'm fine with this as long as the image looks good. It's you know you got to make sure first of all that the the stock image looks great, and then you got to make sure that your artist is actually photoshopping it into the image realistically, right? It's got to look good. If you're going to be doing some kind of placement, it's got to look uh, nice. And I've seen so many times where the resolutions just don't match up, right? The stock image is super high resolution, and then the product was taken with a I don't know what it was taken with. It's some kind of a low resolution shot and then it's photoshopped into a high resolution image and it's just pixelated and it doesn't look right the lighting is not the same there's no shadow um, it just looks bad not only does it look bad the first time someone sees this they're just going to be like you know what these guys are trying to trick me this is garbage they're, you know they're, they're trying to show me a photo that's not even real so you're going to lose all your sales so don't do that right hire a professional company um, that will that you can actually send your product to and have them take photos. I mean, it's just a, a one-time thing, right? Once you have your photos on this product, you're set. So um, people always ask me, well, who can I use? So I'm going to give you the name of one company. I mentioned this company in one of our recent Q&As, but I'm going to mention it here very quickly. Check out UpgradedImages.com. All right, UpgradedImages.com. I've heard really great things from people that are actually using them. Um, they're giving our AMPM podcast listeners a discount during the checkout. Just mention that you're an AMPM uh, listener and uh, that you want the AMPM pricing, and they'll give you an upgrade uh, for the resolution or on the resolution of your image. They'll give you a higher resolution and they'll uh, give you bulk pricing. So that's all I'm going to say on that. If you want to find out more, you can listen to one of our previous Q&A episodes where I cover that. But use them, you know, or use a similar company to uh, get these really good images. If you're going to be doing your own images, then make sure that the lighting is really good. Okay. And make sure your resolution is, is very good too. You know, uh, Amazon recommends a thousand by a thousand pixels. I always like to go higher than that. 1500 by 1500, even 2000 by 2000, the higher, the better. Okay. Uh, but the lighting has got to be really good, right? And a lot of people don't, don't understand lighting, and that's why I suggest going to a professional. But if you are going to do something, especially for your, your main image, right, where Amazon wants everything to be white, to have a white background, I've seen people put stuff up against walls and take photos, and then it just looks bad, and there's a shadow, and it just it, it doesn't look good at all. Um, create a light box or order a light box. Okay, If you're looking to... You know what I'm going to do, actually? If you're looking to build a light box, um, by the time you're listening to this podcast, I'm going to have posted on our Facebook group a video on how to build a light box for $5. It's a really cool video. I, I don't think I've ever shared it on our group yet. So I'm going to post it there. Okay. It's going to be called a $5 light box. Check it out. It shows you all the material you need to buy over at like a Home Depot, something like that. Um, and you can build a light box that you can put your product into and then take images with your, your camera, whether it's a regular camera, your iPhone, whatever it is. And the images for for those that have the white background that, that are require a white background will look way way better than if you just stick it you know up against a white wall or in the middle of a room. Okay, so check that out on our Facebook group, and um, and you can build one, or you can buy some uh, some stuff off of Amazon. They have light boxes on there that uh, are substantially more expensive if you if you're not a tinker or a builder. But I'm uh, I, I always try to show people how they can do something on the cheap or for free um, if they have the time. If they have more time than they have money, for example. Okay, so check that out. Make sure that you're using all of your images. Okay, all the slots that they give you, whether that's seven, nine, however many they're giving you, make sure you fill them in. Okay, but if you're going to be doing that, make sure that all the images are just phenomenal. They got to be fantastic. Okay, so if you have seven images, but really only six of them are really good, and the seventh one's like, eh, maybe, then just post a six. It's better to post all of them as phenomenal images. Than to have that one in there that's bad because that one image is going to be pretty much what you're judged by it's going to be uh, the image that really kills the deal right they could be sold on everything and you see that one image and you're like ah dang that's terrible i've had that happen to me when i was looking for cars back in the day right i, uh, I would buy cars and flip them this was one of my very first 
uh, jobs when I was a, a young guy, right? And um, I would look at all these images and they were fantastic. And then there would be one image in there that would just be a bad shot, bad lighting. It would show, you know, the blemishes or, and, and that kind of stuff on the car. And it would kill the deal. I wouldn't even want to go look at it. Whereas if that image wasn't in there, I probably would have went out and looked at it. And maybe when I saw the blemishes and all the stuff in, in person, I might have overlooked it because I was already there. You know, I was already, uh, you know, I took the time to go out there. I probably would have made some kind of an offer anyways. But because of that one image, they didn't even get the chance. No opportunity for me to even go out there. Does that make sense? So make sure all the images are fantastic. If you're even doubting that it looks, you know, if you're like, man, I don't know, this one's a little bit, eh, then it's not good. You got to be like in love with each of the images. Okay. So I also, uh, I leave one image now. This is something I haven't been doing, but I'm doing now uh, for products that require some kind of instruction, right? If you've got a product that somebody needs to put together or uh, it's not it's not something, it's not like a spatula, right? You don't need instructions for a spatula, but if it's something that's got multiple pieces that that they screw together or they you somehow have to put something or you have to assemble something for example or it's electrical and you got to put components together and then plug them in it's probably good to have some kind of an instruction sheet in your product but i found that for whatever reason a lot of people just don't look at instruction sheets okay even if it's a card whatever it is in the box i do it it does help a little bit but i i'm now putting this as an image uh you know if there's four steps to the product you know step number one do this step number two do this step number three and then number four, I'll do like a, a split image, right? It'll be a, 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 an image that's split into four pieces, step one, two, three, and four. And then I'll actually add that instruction to my image set. And that way when people are going through, it's there. If they have a question about the product, oftentimes they'll go back to your product page and they'll be looking uh, for that answer, right? A lot of times they'll go and actually ask a question, but if they see the image there, it might answer their question and um, I've seen my support tickets for the specific, um, the scenario where people are asking, you know, I can't get this thing to work. I don't know how to do this. Um, when I put that instruction sheet, that image uh, on the product page itself, instead of getting nine or 10 emails about that, and let's say in a given month, it's now one. So uh, very helpful, especially if you got a lot of products. You know, it doesn't seem like nine or 10 emails is a lot, but if you got 10 products, that's now 90 or 100 emails. That you got to deal with right that's a pretty cool little tactic that i'm just now employing because it's starting to get to the point where too many emails are coming in too much too many support issues you also want to include lifestyle images okay lifestyle images are ultra important you don't want just images of your product you want to have images of the product in use okay so if you've got a cooking product you're going to show somebody actually cooking with it if it's a camping product you're going to show somebody in a camping environment actually using your product it's going to resonate it's going to connect with people that do that kind of activity that want to get that product and by adding these lifestyle images right you're going to find that your conversion rate goes way up i use them on everything and they're very helpful and i can very quickly see the difference between having one of those images and not and i remember once i had a product that i posted up uh, very quickly and it was to get the FN SKU set up and get it over to my supplier so they could ship the product out to me. And I never went back and added any additional images. I think it had like uh, four, four or five product images and nothing else. And these were based off of the samples that I'd gotten uh, with my logo and everything on it. No, uh, no lifestyle images. And it was okay. And then when I finally realized, oh man, I don't have any lifestyle images and I put those in there, the uh, conversion rate went up. And I was actually able to increase the price point because of it. So it absolutely does work. It helps, right? If you're a parent and there's a baby product and it's just shots of that product, that's cool. But if it show, if, if you can do that and add additional images that show the product actually in use um, with a baby, right? Uh, that shows how the baby's using it or how the product is being used on the baby, then you're going to be more inclined to use it. Okay. So very important. Get those done. If you, uh, I mean, there's different ways you, uh, of doing this. You can certainly fake it by photoshopping it if you, if you want to do that. Um, but probably the the best way, to, the way to make it look good is to actually spend a little money, go with a company that does uh, photography and uh, get them to bring a model in and uh, do some lifestyle shots with that model. Uh, it's going to cost you a little bit of money, but in the end, the money that you put in, uh, you're going to get out hopefully you know a hundredfold, a thousandfold um, if the product is good. 
and especially now that you're going to have professional looking images and I like the images and I, I mentioned this before I like those really high-end looking images where the product is in focus and the backgrounds are slightly bur blurred or they're very heavily blurred um, so if you have a model that's using the product you know that whole section if she's in the kitchen let's say for example cooking something then that's going to be in, in super focus where the background image you know where the maybe the the backsplash and the the stove and whatever is behind the actor the character that's actually showing the product in use that'll all be blurred so that the focus is really on that product so it's important to do that and the problem with using a lot of today's phones is that you don't really have that depth of field right that's what it's called so everything is in focus everything is literally in focus so nothing really pops nothing stands out so you might want to ask uh, your photographer whoever you're dealing with to try to uh, to do that and again you can fake that kind of stuff too you can have a photoshop person start blurring backgrounds but i just don't feel like you should fake things if you can just spend just a little bit more money and and get the the real thing and make it look good you'll feel better about yourself as well because you'll know hey this is my product in actual use a couple other tips um, you want to make sure that your primary image is as large as possible in that particular image okay um, if you for example if you've got uh, let's say you're just selling a, a wine glass and the wine glass there's a lot of space at the top and the bottom of it and on the left and right side of it when Amazon when Amazon is showing the uh, the thumbnail right on the search results page it's going to shrink down the thumbnail so that everybody's image all, all the thumbnails are of, of similar size right but your image is now going to be very small in the center of this thumbnail so you're just not going to stand out so when you're actually editing these thumbnails I'm, the image for the thumbnail for the first actual image the one with the white background you want to make sure you have a almost a perfect square image okay and you want the product itself to be literally almost touching the edges you know the top and the bottom left and right if it's a, if it's kind of a white product um, so that it it is as large as possible on the search results pages uh, the, when they when your products actually coming up that way yours will stand out okay that's one thing that I do with all of my images and I make sure that the lighting is perfect and everything looks really good that the image pops okay and if you're taking I have one product that's metal and I was taking images or I was taking photos of it and it was reflecting a lot of the background which looked cool but it actually changed the metal from you know a really cool silver looking kind of metal to more of a gold so in the image itself it actually looked like a gold product like gold metal like a almost like a not bronze it was kind of weird more, more like a, a rose gold and it just didn't look as good as it should have and it didn't match what I was actually selling so that pro the, the images were really good we just had to do a little bit of color adjustment in Photoshop to bring that nice sharp silver look to it um, before it was posted so make sure you're adjusting colors as well so that um, it actually shows what the product really looks like okay you want it to look as good as possible and from week to week maybe in the beginning maybe every couple of weeks swap out some images do do one image swap out at a time like maybe change out the primary image or maybe the secondary the main image that people will mouse down to and, and actually see change it with something different right uh, a different lifestyle image or or something that looks pretty cool uh, that maybe you just don't have space to put in there and split test things let it run for a week and see if your conversion rate changes see if your sales are changing right if you if you can uh, do this manually that's cool if not um, on our tools section over at ampmpodcast.com there's a tools button um, there's a link for a service called splitly okay and splitly was one that was mentioned by greg mercer of jungle scout and um, it allows you to automate the process of split testing various things and images is, is one of those things so you can say okay on on next Tuesday at midnight I wanted to swap out this image with this new image and then you can run and see with this a B split test if you're actually getting a better response rate or not okay so there's little things that you can do to constantly be testing and tweaking and um, you might find that changing one image suddenly gives you a drastic uptick in, in sales and then you can go you know after a week or two change one other little thing and see if that changes things if it gets worse put it back you know change something else uh, but always be testing because you might find that one little thing right I mean changing something from a green color to a blue color in, in an image a background or whatever makes a big difference you know you never know one last thing I wanted to mention in regards to the lifestyle images is that I often try to get a lifestyle image to also answer a particular question okay and you know when you're selling um, you have customers that will write on the the page and they'll have a question for the seller right and then 
you or people that have actually purchased the product can chime in. They can respond to it, right? So if you start, if you already know, for example, what a lot of the basic questions are going to be because you're, you've been selling this product for a while or you've sold similar products, then you can actually get the images to answer those questions. Okay. So if somebody's saying, Hey, can you, can you use it with this? Well, you know, show one of your lifestyle images of them actually using that product with that other product, the thing that actually generates a, a lot of the same questions. Okay. These types of questions, and that'll actually answer that. So you'll eliminate that whole thing. So if you can have three or four lifestyle images that answer the three or four most uh, popular questions, you're reducing your workload in terms of support and uh, you're just you're adding value you're actually getting people to to see that your product actually does work that way or it is doing uh, what they hope it it does because not everybody's going to answer that question or ask that question sorry they're going to have that question but they people are lazy in general right so they might not even want to ask it and they'll just move on to the next product so if you have that there you might actually be able to increase your convert your conversions as well so guys that's about it for the images i think this covers all the basic to intermediate stuff. Obviously you can't use text on your primary images. There's a lot of little things that I skipped over. I should probably say there's two quotes to live by when, when it comes to your images. One is you are only as strong as your weakest image, right? So think about that one. You're only as strong as your weakest image. Okay. Or as my buddy Kevin says, you will be judged by your worst image. I couldn't have said it better myself. Remember that guys, you'll be judged by your worst image. So make sure you have really good images up there. Listen to this podcast again. If you want to take notes, check out uh, the light box instructional video. That's going to be posted on our Facebook group. It should already be there right now by the time you're listening to this. And, um, yeah, the instructional image I talked about steps one, two, three, four, more steps. If you, if you have them just to uh, reduce your customer support, it's another little tactic that I'm using. There's a lot of little tricks, tactics, things you can do that uh, just help your business overall. Um, again, the Facebook site or the, the group is called Amazon FBA high rollers. Go check it out. That's where the video for the light box will be posted. You can find that on Facebook by doing a search or again, go to ampmpodcast.com. I'm also uh, doing periscopes, not as often as I used to, been very busy with software, doing uh, a lot of things, a lot of cool things. Um, if you want to check out um, the various software tools that I'm using and that uh, some of our um, higher level guys are using, check out the tools link over at our website at ampmpodcast.com. And at the top right, there should be a tools button. That tools button will take you to a page where you can check out the various tools, uh, especially uh, keyword tools, optimization tools, things like that, that um, without those things, without being highly keyword optimized, people won't even find your product. They'll never see your images. So the images will be a moot point, right? So that, like I said, it's all important. So get your keywords dialed in, use those tools. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of cool stuff there. And um, yeah, that's about it. So until next time, guys, appreciate your time. Thank you for joining me. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye now. You've been listening to the AM PM podcast hosted by Manny Coates. For more information, insider, insider tools, tools, and to get the resources mentioned in this episode, visit ampmpodcast.com.